Drone pilot Joe Tegmeyer recently captured and posted on X.com these four images showing a Tesla Cybertruck charging at Gigafactory, Texas. And while these images at first glance don't seem to be that significant, as Austin and Steve pointed out in response to this post, the Cybertruck is backed up quite close to the supercharger here due to the superchargers having relatively short cables. In this video, I wanna discuss not only the issue of short supercharging cables and charging the Tesla Cybertruck, but I also wanna talk a little bit about um, Tesla's new V4 superchargers and how quickly I estimate that the Cybertruck will actually charge. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Now, once again, when you look at these images, um, there's nothing really super significant at first glance. But as Austin Ferguson pointed out and Steve Sassman also um, added here, you can see that the Cybertruck is backed up quite closely to the charging port. So apparently the short supercharging cables will be an issue when charging the Cybertruck and this will need to be fixed by Tesla. The first time I personally used a Tesla supercharger, I didn't pull the Model Y back that I was driving far enough for the cable to reach the charge port. So I had to get out of the vehicle back up a little further before I could actually get the charging cable to go into the charge port. And I remember that even pulled back as far as I could safely go, it was still a pretty tight fit for that cable. So Tesla has optimized their cables to just fit their vehicles. However, now that first deliveries of the Cybertruck should be happening sometime later this year, and due to the fact that uh, Tesla is opening up the supercharging network here in the United States to a number of other brands, including Ford and GM starting in 2024, Tesla is going to have to obviously address the issue of the short supercharging cables because not all the other vehicles are optimized for this. And the length of the Cybertruck is going to be a little bit of an issue apparently when it comes to charging it at existing superchargers. Now the Cybertruck won't be as long as maybe some people thought it would be because Elon Musk made very clear in the recent Q2 2023 Tesla investor conference call that the Cybertruck is designed to fit into a 20 foot garage. So if it fits into a 20 foot garage, then it will be less than 20 feet long. But despite it not being extremely large, it's still large enough that um, superchargers will really need to have a longer charging cable for the Cybertruck to easily charge at them. Now, the Tesla team has obviously um, thought this through, and this is one of the reasons why I believe that Tesla's new V4 superchargers do have longer cables to not only accommodate other EVs, but also to accommodate the Cybertruck. According to this article from notatesla.app.com, Tesla's uh, V2, V3 superchargers, etc., have a cable length of around 6.5 feet. However, Tesla's new V4 superchargers have a cable that is almost 10 feet long. So the extra three plus feet of cable length will make a big difference, not only for the Cybertruck, but also other electric vehicles. However, even with V4 superchargers being installed, and even if Tesla does this at a pretty fast pace, for a while, the vast majority of Tesla's charging stations will still feature the previous V2 or V3 supercharger stalls. So I believe Tesla will still need to install longer cables at their existing superchargers, for instance, like the V2 and the V3 superchargers, to really allow for this to be practical when Tesla opens up the network and when the Cybertruck really starts hitting the streets in volume. With that being said, I now want to move over to Tesla's V4 superchargers, talk about the speed of those superchargers, and also um, just how quickly I estimate that the Cybertruck will actually charge. At the Tesla Semi delivery event that was held in December last year, this slide was shown, which shows that the Tesla V4 superchargers should be capable of one megawatt plus DC fast charging. However, it's becoming apparent that that charging speed, that one megawatt plus charging speed, um, will be reserved for the Tesla Semi chargers, at least for now, because as this article from The Verge points out, um, in regard to a V4 supercharger that was installed in the Netherlands. Based on some numbers on one of those V4 supercharger cabinets, 
the V4 supercharger there should technically be able to charge it up to 615 kilowatts, despite actually being limited to 250 kilowatts at the moment. However, it looks like that limit of 250 kilowatts may be temporary because um, it looks like 350 kilowatts has been confirmed for Tesla's V4 superchargers because this electric article that was published on July 26th of this year seems to confirm that a V4 supercharger station that is being installed in the UK has a power rating of 350 kilowatts. And this information comes from someone on Reddit who posted an image of a planning statement. So while the V4 supercharger in the Netherlands is limited to 250 kilowatts for now, it looks like the one in the UK will be a 350 kilowatt charger. And I expect that when we see V4 superchargers hit the United States, that there will also be 350 kilowatt chargers. Now, when it comes to 350 kilowatt charging and the Tesla Cybertruck, remember that the Tesla Cybertruck will have 4680 batteries and the standard range all wheel drive Model Y that is equipped with 4680 batteries does charge just a bit slower than the long range all wheel drive 2170 equipped Model Y. And I've discussed this previously in past videos. This slower charging speed is partly due to the fact that the battery capacity of the 4680 equipped Model Y is less than the long range all wheel drive 2170 equipped Model Y. So we're talking about around 71.6 kilowatt hours for the standard range all wheel drive and around 82 kilowatt hours for the long range all wheel drive Model Y. So there is a variance there in battery capacity, which does affect the charging curve and thus affect how long it takes to charge a vehicle. So the charging curve is quite different. And once again, that's partially due to the battery capacity being different, but I personally believe that even if the battery sizes between the long range all wheel drive and the standard range all wheel drive Model Y were the same, I believe it's very possible that the 2170 batteries would still charge faster due to the fact that they contain a small amount of silicon in the anode of those batteries, which not only helps Tesla increase the energy density of the cells, but also this has the potential to speed up the charging of those batteries as well. We do know that the 4680 batteries, even the new second generation Cybertruck 4680 batteries or cyber cells do not have silicon in their anodes just yet because Drew confirmed this in Tesla's Q2 2023 investor conference call when he was discussing the fact that their new cyber cell has a 10% energy boost over the previous 4680 batteries. Um, but he made it very clear that this was achieved without integrating silicon in these batteries, but rather was achieved, quote, through process and mechanical design optimization. So the cyber cell will be more energy dense, but I don't believe it'll have a much different charging curve than the current 4680 batteries that are in the standard range all wheel drive Model Y. Now, the truth is the Tesla team has never claimed that the 4680 batteries would charge faster than the 2170 batteries. In fact, at battery day, this chart was shown, which shows a very slight charging speed penalty with the 46 millimeter design. Now, in order to estimate the charging speed of the Cybertruck, we need more data than we officially have. However, I believe we have enough to piece together a pretty good estimate. And Bearded Tesla shared a rumor on X.com that based on conversations with three people, the Cybertruck will apparently initially be offered in a 350 mile range variant. So for instance, when it comes to the battery size, I believe we can take a look at, for instance, the Mustang Mach-E versus the Model Y when it comes to efficiency how many kilowatt hours are needed per 100 miles of driving. Take a look at the efficiency difference there and then go to the Ford F-150 Lightning and use a similar percentage to say that the Cybertruck is going to be this much percent more efficient than the Ford F-150 Lightning and then have a rough estimate of what the battery size will be for the Cybertruck. So for instance, the most efficient all-wheel drive Mustang Mach-E needs approximately 21.4% more energy per 100 miles. And this comes from fueleconomy.gov, which is using EPA data. And if we assume that the Cybertruck is around 20% more efficient than the F-150 Lightning all-wheel drive with the extended range battery, which has an EPA rated 320 mile range with its 131 kilowatt hour battery, According to my calculations, this would equate to approximately a 115 kilowatt hour battery pack for the Cybertruck, 
So I'm going to estimate a battery pack size uh, between 115 to 120 kilowatt hours for a Cybertruck that has around 350 miles of range. I believe that's a pretty reasonable estimate based on the numbers that we know. Now that we have a rough estimate for what I believe the battery size will look like, now we have to kind of tackle the issue of charging curve. It's really difficult to estimate a charge when you don't have a charging curve, especially since we don't have an example of a Tesla that can accept 350 kilowatts of power. But notice that the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y charging curve tapers off quite quickly in this chart that I created and doesn't seem to take advantage of the full 250 kilowatts available at a V3 supercharger. Beyond this charging curve, the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y takes just a bit over 30 minutes to go from a 10% state of charge to an 80% state of charge. So that's not bad at all, but it's not quite as quick as the long range all wheel drive Model Y. I do hope that the larger Cybertruck battery will make it possible for the Cybertruck to actually hit 350 kilowatts, at least for a few minutes, if connected to a V4 supercharger that can put out 350 kilowatts of power, but it's unclear what the actual charging curve may look like. But nonetheless, I predict that charging the Cybertruck from 10% to 80% when connected to a supercharger that can put out 350 kilowatts of power, I believe if you compare that charge time to a 10 to 80% charge at a 250 kilowatt charger, I personally believe that the charging time is not going to be drastically different because I'm not so sure initially that the charging curve of the 4680 batteries will take full advantage of a 350 kilowatt charger. So with that being said, here is my prediction for how long I believe it'll take for the Tesla Cybertruck to charge from a 10% to 80% state of charge at a supercharger that can put out up to 350 kilowatts of power. I believe it's very possible that going from a 10% to 80% state of charge in a Cybertruck could take somewhere around 45 minutes, even when connected to a 350 kilowatt charger. And I don't believe it would be much different if connected to a 250 kilowatt charger, because once again, I'm not so sure that even the new cyber cells will be able to take full advantage of a 350 kilowatt charger. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you, whether or not you think I'm right about this or you think I'm wrong. I'd also like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.